it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to crochet the quick gift button cowl. This is a beautiful shell stitch piece and we're going to be adding a button loop to quickly secure it around this pretty button that I have here. This is part of the 12 weeks of gifting series on Fiberflux where now through the end of the year I'm going to be sharing a quick and easy gift idea. Um, all of them free patterns, all of them with an accompanying video to walk you through the entire project. And this has been a fun project and it's now through the end of the year, every week we'll have a pattern. We have had several so far, so down below you can see the directory where all the links to the other patterns and projects are. Now, as a side note, this shell stitch is the same shell stitch that I used for the ear warmer that we made a couple of weeks ago. So, although I chose different colors, um, you could make them in the same color and make a little set. So just as a side note, this is the same stitch as our ear warmer we did a few weeks ago. So the finished piece measures about 20 inches long and about 9 to 10 inches wide. And it is secured with this button that's about an inch wide. This is a very versatile piece. You could wear it sort of asymmetrically like I have it laid out here. Or you could wear it sort of draped around your shoulders like a little capelet. If you're not into the button, you could always seam the edges and make more of a traditional cowl that you kind of pull over your head. If you hop on over to the Fiberflux blog, you can see all of the different uh, photos of how I styled it. And you can also get a photo for the button placement as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is helpful to get the length that you need. You'll also need one button. Now this is a pretty large button. This is about an inch wide. And it's a great opportunity to kind of use up some buttons if you have some single kind of random buttons laying around. We're also going to be using an 8 millimeter L crochet hook. And then we're going to be using a yarn called Super Saver Chunky from Red Heart Yarns. Now you may notice for the 12 weeks of gifting, if you've made any of the other projects with us, that the hook and the yarn are the same for all the projects. We're just switching up the colors a little bit for each project. And this color that I'll be using today is called light gray. It's kind of like a silvery gray. Now this yarn does not have, now let me see where I can find it, does not have dye lots. So if you're using multiple colors, uh, you don't have to worry about dye lots. And it says it right here on the label. If you need to substitute yarn, look for a five bulky on the yarn weight scale and look for a yarn that recommends the eight millimeter L crochet hook, which is what we're using also. And you'll be just fine with your project. And also as a side note, each skein of this is 173 yards, 158 meters, and we'll be using one skein of this. And as a side note too, it is machine wash and dry. So for gift giving, I always try to look for yarns like that, that uh, the, the recipient of the gift can easily wash. So let's get started. So we're going to get going and put a slip knot on our hook. Now let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see here. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Okay? Next, we're going to chain 31. Now, I wanted to break that down for you a little bit more because I wanted to show you the finished piece here. Now, if you want to make it a little bit wider than I did or narrower, you could change the multiples. Now, our multiple is 6 plus 1. So that just means when you're doing your starting chain, you're going to go 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 and so forth, and then add one more chain onto that. Um, to change the width of your piece. But our starting chain is going to be 31 chains. So let's zoom back in. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, whoops, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, my yarn's creeping over, 29, 30, and 31. So you can kind of estimate how wide it's going to be by your starting chain. So you can get an idea. Now if this looks way too narrow or you know, you want it to be wider for something much uh, more of coverage around your neck, for example. You can change the width using that multiple. So let's move on to row one next. 
So what we need to do is in the fourth chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, and four. We're going to work two double crochets. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then you'll work another double crochet in that same chain. And then what we're going to do is skip two chains, one, two, and then work a single crochet into the next chain. Insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook this time. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops, okay? Then what we need to do is skip two chains, one and two, and in the chain after that, this time we're going to work four double crochets all in the same chain. So one double crochet, two, three, and four. Just like that. We're starting to get those nice little fans. Next we're going to skip two more chains. So one and two, and then in the next chain work a single crochet. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain work four double crochet. One, two, whoops, three, and four. Just like that. Then we're going to skip two chains. One, two, work a single crochet in that next chain after that. Skip two chains, one, two, work four double crochets in the chain after that. So one, two, three, and four. Skip two chains and in the chain after that work a single crochet. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain work four double crochets. One, two, three, and four. Now you'll have three chains left on your row, so skip two chains and in that very last chain work a single crochet. Okay? So row one is actually the hardest row and we've just done it because it's just counting and skipping and such. Okay? So you'll have some nice pretty scallops here. Now row two is what you'll repeat for the rest of the row. If you joined us on our fall crochet along, the um, autumn farmhouse blanket, you'll recognize this stitch. This is a stitch that I love to create. It's pretty, but it also gives a nice solid fabric, which is good for wearing and for blankets, so there's no kind of breeze blowing in. But it still is like a, sort of like hints of lace, but it's still a nice solid fabric. All right, so for row two, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. Now, this very first stitch, See this very first stitch at the bottom? So here's our chain, and then at the bottom, you see that loop? Work two double crochets in that very first stitch. One and two. Now we're gonna move on to the next fan. Remember we did four double crochets to make this fan? One, two, three, four. We're gonna go in the center of the fan. So if you pull it apart, you'll be able to see two double crochets on this side and two double crochets on this side. So go into that space in the very middle of the fan and work a single crochet. Insert the hook, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring through both loops, just like that. Next, we're going to hop over to that single crochet from the previous row. So you can see it right there, it's like a loop in between the fans. And we're gonna work four double crochets. One, two, three, and four. So our, our fans are sort of wedged in between the fans from the previous row. 
hop over to that next fan and in between locate the middle of it and work a single crochet right in the middle of that fan in between those double crochets from the previous row and then what we're going to do is hop over to the single crochet in between the fans and work your four double crochets one two three and four work a single crochet in the center of the next fan right in the space there and then work a uh, four double crochet in between the fans and that single crochet from the previous row so one two three and four okay we're building up some nice pretty fan fabric here work a single crochet in the center of the next fan and then what we're going to do we're nearing the home stretch of our row here we're going to work four double crochet into that next space a single crochet from the previous row so one two three and four and then we're going to work to finish off the row we're going to work a single crochet into the turning chain space so remember when we did a chain and uh, you know a series of chains and then we turned well that creates a space so you can see the chains here and then there's like a space there so work a single crochet right into that turning chain space okay so row two is complete now for the rest of your button cowl you're going to be repeating row two over and over and over and over again until your piece is as long as you'd like it to be um, I'm going to give you some dimensions as we move forward but um, if you want a custom fit for you or for the gift recipient just kind of throw it around your neck as you crochet and see if you want something more long and drapey or if you want it to be real snug up around your neck it's totally up to you so, alright just working that very last stitch and our rectangle here that we're creating is complete now before I show you how to make the button loop which is super duper easy I just wanted to give you a quick measurement of how far I've come now we have a width of our rectangle here of about nine and a half inches long and then if we unfold this our rectangle is roughly 29 inches long okay so you can keep working rows if you like to make yours longer if you want it to have a little bit more drape I just had a smidge of yarn left not enough to make a, another row um, but enough more than enough to make a little loop for our button that I'm going to show you how to um, attach later so what we want to do just to make the loop it's super easy we're just going to chain 12 one two three let me zoom in a little bit four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve now to create the loop we have the length here we're going to go back down to where we began see that little stitch there at the top we're going to go back down with our hook and then wrap yarn around hook bring up a loop now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook so you're just going to work a slip stitch at the base okay next what we're going to do is grab a pair of scissors and we're just going to cut the yarn and fasten off and then the crocheted part of our button cowl is complete we just need to do a few more things we do have a little bit of matching yarn because we're going to be sewing our button so we're just going to put that aside for now but we do need to work the ends in so let's do that next now we have one here by our button loop and so what I'm going to do is let me flip this over now this is completely reversible as you can see it's the same on both sides here's one side here's the other side um, but attaching a button will make it have a right and a wrong side but for now it's reversible so you want to make sure that your ends are pretty well hidden and I'm going to zoom out so you can see a little bit better so take your tapestry needle go in one direction into those some of those stitches here go in one direction like kind of twist it if you need to and then come back in the other direction just like sort of lock that tail into place and pull it through giving it a wiggle if need be and then tug 
and then trim with your scissors and that end is woven in. I'm going to go ahead and weave some of my other ends in and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and learn how to add the button. Okay, all of the ends are woven in. Now we just need to figure out our button placement. So if you wrap the piece around your neck like this, let me slide this out of the way and we'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing all at once. If you wrap it around, like let's say this is your neck, you're going to wrap it around your shoulders. Um, we're going to base our button placement on where it's going to go. Now you can wear it sort of like a little mini capelet and kind of do it like that or you can bring it over a little bit and wear it asymmetrically like that. Now either way you want to kind of put the button here so when you button it you could either sort of slide it around or bring the button to the front. Okay, So if we lay our piece out like this Here's our loop, okay? We're gonna put our button across from there, and I would say about an inch in and an inch down, just about like that, okay? So let's grab a piece of matching yarn. Now, the uh, tapestry needle that I used earlier is way too big to go through these buttonholes, so you might wanna switch to a smaller tapestry needle if your buttonholes are smaller uh, than this uh, needle eye that I have here. So grab a piece of matching yarn, about 12 inches long or so and we're going to thread our tapestry needle. Now mine is much smaller now so I had to give it a little twist before I put it through that eye. And all we're going to do is holding our button in place, we're going to come up from the bottom of our button, I'm just looking for that button hole. There it is. Okay, we're going to come up from the bottom and go back down. Do this a few times, okay? And I love using a matching piece of yarn. Some people prefer needle and thread. I like to use a matching piece of yarn because it gives the little pop of the same color that's found throughout the piece. Okay, so just do this a couple of times. Come back down. And I did mine about three times or so. Tighten it up. Now flip it over. And you're going to just tie it right on. Now, any piece that you wear and especially a button will have a little bit of stress on it with the loop around it and you're wearing it. So you want to make sure everything is nice and secure. So you want to go through that button a couple of times and then you want to tie a couple sturdy knots on there. And then at the end what you can do is, I'm going to use this bigger one because I don't have to go through the button anymore. It's easier to thread. Um, then what you want to do is just go through and weave in your ends to finish, okay? I'm gonna weave in my ends, snip, weave in the other end, just go right in there, and now our piece, because it has a button now, now it has a definite front and back. Okay, and we're just coming the other end, whoops, to lock that tail into place. Okay, and then you can snip it, and our piece is complete. So now you can try it with the buttonhole and lay it out how you want, try it on, see how it looks. And here is our finished piece. It looks fabulous. So be sure to join our Ravelry group, our Facebook group to go hang out with the other makers for the cowl, this cowl and some of our other ones we have going on. And also use the hashtag FiberFluxCowl to share all your beautiful pieces on social media. So that is how you crochet the quick gift button cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Bye -bye.